Hey everybody, and welcome back to Moto with Ellery, and in this episode we're going to look at stereoscopic rendering uh, for use both in uh, stereoscopic VR as well as uh, for VR, uh, as in VR headsets like Oculus Rift or the uh, HTC Vive or any of the other kind of Google Cardboard even kind of applications uh, that might use a side-by-side -side VR approach um, where you'd actually use lenses for each individual eye. Um, all right, so uh, as we go into this, uh, we're going to start just by looking at how the stereoscopic camera works and some uh, little workflow tips that you might be able to use uh, in order to speed up that uh, that workflow and uh, get into actually making these images. And also we'll look at how we can make images appropriate for whatever format it is uh, that we're actually going to render in. So uh, let's start here. I've got this really simple scene here. It's uh, just a basic uh, subdivided uh, ground plane with a replicator and uh, a bunch of geometric primitives. So really simple scene here. And if we hop over to the setup view here, uh, we can see that we've just got the camera over here and the plane and really that's it. So in this view, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my replicators. So you can press O and then go to replicators and make all visible. That way we can see what's going on. And then I'm going to select the camera and I'm going to press the W key just to get the move tool on. Uh, and that's going to show us the uh, the camera's focal distance here. And that can be helpful and we can use that actually to help us a little bit uh, as we set up some things later on. Uh, but all of the actual things that we're looking for are going to happen here on the camera item. So what we'll do is we've got the camera selected here and I'm going to go down to camera effects. It's not in camera view, but in camera effects is where we're going to start. And the first place we'll look here is under the stereo section where we'll actually just have the enable checkbox to turn it on. So there you go. You turn on uh, stereoscopic rendering and you see there is something that happens to the camera. And what we'll see here is uh, we'll see a red and a cyan uh, colored box. And those are representing the view from each individual eye. Okay, so uh, this is separating out uh, so we have both stereo eyes rendered. And if you look here, the next thing that you see under the checkbox is the ability to render either one eye or the other. So you can either render left or right separately or both. Uh, in some instances, you may want to render just one eye or another. Um, so you have that option here. And then there's the option for the stereo composite. And this can actually be uh, adjusted after you render, um, just so you know, you don't have to set this here and then that's uh, kind of fixed is how the image is. So in this case, I'm just going to take it and uh, I'm going to set it down to anaglyph uh, red blue uh, because I have a little paper and plastic pair of red and blue 3D glasses that I commandeered from one of my kids' storybooks. Uh, if you don't tell, I won't. Um, but I've got those here. So that's going to give you a nice uh, preview. And it's a really simple and extremely uh, affordable way to be able to preview your, your 3D stereoscopically without having to send it out to another device or, you know, or anything like that. You just have it ready and you can actually preview it right on screen so that you can get an idea of how the actual layout is working because there are going to be a couple settings here, uh, mainly the interocular distance, the distance between eyes, and the convergence distance that no matter how we change the format, you know, we change it for, you know, doing this kind of anaglyph version versus doing one for um, something like uh, like the Rift, this stuff is going to pretty much stay the same. And it's going to be set up on a scene-by-scene -scene basis, and a lot of that is going to have to do with how you have the scale of your scene set up. So if you look at this scene here, um, what we've got is... A, a plane that's only a couple of meters across, so it's not really big. Our individual items are relatively small. You know, this is like uh, something like a, a big tabletop. All right, so at default, we're not going to get a whole lot of depth out of this because it's not a very deep scene. Um, but we can actually just get a real quick test render and see what that looks like. Now, one thing to note here is if I go to the camera view, this is not something that we actually get to preview in camera uh, or here in real time, OpenGL, which um, is kind of unfortunate, would be a nice touch. But but um, that is not something that is here on the OpenGL uh, rendering engine. So in order to see these, we actually have to render. Um, so what I'm going to do here is let's hop over to the render preview. Um, and this also doesn't show up in preview render. So the only way you actually get these is doing a, an actual render. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, you can see this is what the scene looks like. I've just got a uh, variation texture on all of my uh, primitives so that they uh, get some different colors. So uh, nothing super complex there. So I'm going to go ahead and click render. 
And this is going to render out two separate frames because it's going to render out the left eye and then the right eye. So it's going to take you know twice as long to render if you're thinking about rendering something like this. Um, whereas if you're rendering something for Oculus Rift or one of the VR headsets, uh, which we'll get into in a minute, you actually only have to render the uh, the each individual frame at half width. Uh, but we'll look at that here in a second. So you can see the colors got weird. All we have to do is click on stereo and it will separate those out um, into the, the anaglyph. So um, I've got my little glasses here and I'm just going to hold them up. And I can see that, you know, the depth is about what I would expect for something, you know, a little bigger than a tabletop. Uh, if you want something to feel much bigger, then you have a couple of choices. You can either... Um, you can either make the scene much bigger, which is always an option, uh, but then remember you'd have to adjust lighting and textures and things like that uh, to make sure that everything still lines up. Um, or you can change your interocular distance. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take uh, the distance, and let's go to the camera here and go to camera effects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, greatly decrease the interocular distance just so we see this. Uh, so let's set this down to something like 15. And then I'm just going to go ahead and render again because these renders don't take very long. And what you'll notice is because these uh, are now much closer together, uh, the depth is going to appear much more shallow. All right, um, and you'll notice as the second frame starts to render, there's not much of a difference. You can even tell from the uh, from the initial irradiance pass that uh, that there's not a lot of difference here. So now, if we let that render, we click on stereo here. And as a side note, here on the arrow on the side here, this is where you can um, choose the different uh, anaglyph styles, or you can choose uh, side by side. So if I go to side by side. You can see that it gives me the two pieces. Now, if I have side-by-side -side chosen, it's going to give me just the, or even full width chosen, it's just going to give me this kind of squished preview here. But when you save out the image, uh, you'll actually get it at full width. So just a thing to note. So let's go back here to my anaglyph. And now if I look at this, the difference, um, since there is much less difference between the two eyes, it changes the effect of the scale of the scene, okay? So your eyes are basically having to uh, change their focal um, length less in order to uh, to get the two sides to converge. So we're getting the sense of a smaller scene um, or a sense of being smaller within the scene rather so that the scene itself actually is going to feel uh, larger. Because if you look at something very far away and you think about this, how your eyes actually work in, in stereoscopic perspective, something very far away, both of your eyes are pretty much converging. So you you don't have to you don't have to have each eye focused on you know something very far off whereas if something is very close then uh then the then they feel like they're much farther apart uh because each eye is having to focus on uh on something much uh you know at much a greater relative distance from eye to eye it's uh the same effect as parallax um so if um that being said, if I go and take, let's just do one more here. We change this up to 150 millimeters, and we'll do one more render. Um, and we'll see that now each one is going to be much wider apart. So it's going to give the effect that we're uh, we're much bigger, and that the scene then conversely is much smaller. And you can see the distance that that red sphere alone or the blue cube shifted uh, just from eye to eye. So we'll let this finish up here in a second. And then we'll go ahead and click stereo. And now you can see that there is a really big difference. Um, and so we get the sense that uh, that these things are much smaller. So there's a lot more focusing work. And it actually becomes a lot more difficult for your eyes to uh, to shift focus, just as it is if you take something that's really close to your face. You know, it takes you a second for your eyes to focus in on it because, um, you know, there's a lot more work that the eyes have to do to converge. Okay, so we can see there's um, kind of the the happy medium, and this is going to be 65 millimeters, the default, which is about the average distance between uh, adult human eyes. 15 millimeters, so much closer together. So um, we get the sense that the scene is much larger, and there's a lot less shift for the eyes. And then finally, um, at 150 millimeters, where everything gets really far apart. All right, so let's set this back here to our default, because that works pretty well. So let's set that to 65 millimeters. And then next, we'll look at the convergence distance. And um, I actually like to set up my convergence distance so that um, I don't have to uh, futz around with a um, with a control here in a in a 
um, a numeric field to change it. Uh, but I want to show you how this works. So you can see that right now the convergence distance is set to 2 meters. So if I change that up to something like 10 meters, you can see that the uh, the boxes are much farther away. Okay, and this is going to also shift the way. Oops, this is going to shift the way that uh, that these two objects um, come together on the stereo pair because you're looking at kind of where the eyes should be meeting. So that's going to be the point where everything is kind of in focus. And you can think of it a lot like depth of field. So things that are in front of it are going to be um, are going to be separated and things that are behind it are also going to be separated. So it's kind of like depth of field near and depth of field far. You know, things that are closer out of focus and things that are far away are also out of focus. And because this ties in so much with uh, with depth of field, should you choose to use depth of field in uh, a scene like this, I actually like to just take and tie my uh, focal distance right into the convergence distance, or actually vice versa. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the schematic view and just set up a an uber basic rig here, um, not even really a rig, it's just a, a, a relationship so that our focal distance, which I'll drag down in here, can drive our convergence distance. All right, so you see we've got focal distance, which actually has, if we cut over to a perspective view here, uh, focal distance actually has, you know, this control here in the viewport. Right, so you can uh, you can change this focal distance just by uh, sliding this in the viewport. Um, you have to have the camera selected, and you have to have a tool active, a transform tool. So I just, uh, in this case, have the move tool on. Or in the 3D view here, in the preview, you can uh, press Control F, and that will shift the focal distance. And you can actually see it changing here under focal distance, um, so that it's putting things in focus based on what is under the mouse when I press Control F. All right, now in order to make this much simpler on myself, uh, I'm just going to take the focal distance, drag it around, and plug it into the convergence distance. And now, uh, if I press Control F on this purple sphere, you'll see that my focal distance is uh, 4.48 meters, and my convergence distance which should line up, should be 4.48 meters as well. So uh, what's going on here is that we are just adjusting, here let's go to the 3D view too, it'll make this a little easier. Uh, we're just adjusting this such that when we change one, the other one changes as well, and it's going to make uh, life quite a bit easier. All right, so that's that's a basic setup on there. Now, remember, if you are going to use depth of field, um, and this actually goes with depth of field in general, but you're implying a focus for your viewers. And the same thing is going to happen, and even to a more pronounced effect, when you have uh, stereoscopic VR. So when you're dealing with something that actually um, is going to give the effect of real depth. Um, the eyes are going to want to be focusing on different things, and you uh, you may want your viewers to be looking around the scene a little bit more. Um, in that case, the uh, the depth of field turned on is actually going to make that a little bit more confusing because as their eyes go to focus on, you know, say this red sphere here. Um, it's still going to be blurry, so it's still going to be out of focus. Now, if, like I said, you want to imply some focus and focus your viewers on something like this sphere, then you know you're set and you're okay with that. All right, so that's a basic walkthrough here. And the next thing that we'll want to look at is if you're rendering for something like the Vive or the Rift or something that has lenses and has an individual view for each eye, we'll actually want to use lens distortion to counter the distortion that's introduced by the lenses on the headset. All right, so uh, in order to look at this, let's actually go in. I've got a lens distortion um file set up here. So you can see I've got a really simple scene with a lens, basically a uh, piece of glass with some rounding on it. You know, um, This is really simple. Uh, and then we have a square behind it with a checkerboard pattern on it. All right, so this is going to represent something like you would have um, if you have a headset on, you know, because we're limited in how the screen size is inside of the device. And if you want to feel as if you're more immersed in it, 
those lenses are what is going to make you feel as if you're more within the scene, and it's going to do so by expanding the perceived field of view of the actual scene, okay? So I've got this set up to just render at uh, at a square resolution, so 1024 by 1024, and at the moment, I don't have any distortion on the lens. So at this point, we're just looking through a clear piece of plastic. Uh, it doesn't have any, um, any kind of actual... Um, property that is is causing some refractive index. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my refractive index up and I'm just going to use glass. Um, and you can see that when I do that we get this pincushion effect where what's in the center stays okay and what's directly along the horizontal lines, uh, horizontal and vertical lines right from the center stays straight but as we get further away from center we get more and more distortion. And you can see what's happened is that now that square that is really smaller than our view here is now filling up the entire field of view. And so that's the point of those lenses is to fill up that field of view and give you, uh, you know, the sense that the screen is bigger than it really is. However, as you can see, that causes this pincushion effect. Um, and in order to counteract that, we'll render with a um, with a barrel distortion effect so that we can straighten everything back out. So let's add that here. I'm just going to go and select my camera. And this is done in the camera view settings here. And you can see that underneath our projection type, we've got a lens. And it's set by default to no distortion. And we have the options for, um, you know, there are presets here of pin cushion distortion and barrel distortion. You are going to want to fine tune this uh, depending on your device. Uh, there is definitely a little bit of tweaking that goes on here, uh, depending on the lens that's being used on whatever your target platform is. Uh, but I'm going to set uh, barrel distortion here. And you can see what's happened is that we now have a much straighter field of view. Okay, and what else has happened is we still are gaining more space for our render. So our render is feeling as if it's taking up more space still because you can see we've got this corner here and it's going in a straight line right along the, you know, just this top section of the lens, but it's still appearing to be visible all the way up through the top of the lens. And we can see how this works more precisely. I can just scale down the cube here or the square rather and we can keep going until there you go. We finally see it start to come out of view in the top and the sides. So if I just go a little bit bigger, you can see that those corners are really barely peeking out here. Um, but because of the lens, it's filling up the entire area. All right. Um, and because we have that pincushion distortion, we render then with a barrel distortion and that counteracts it so everything still looks straight once it's viewed in the VR uh, realm. Now, when you see these kind of videos a lot of times on YouTube or something that are rendered or, uh, or photographed or whatever that have the stereoscopic eyes, a lot of times you'll see that barrel distortion, which looks like, let's hide our lens, which looks like this a little bit. You can see this has a little bit of rounding. Um, and that's just because that distortion is being applied. And a lot of times you'll just get black around the edges, but by still rendering out full frame, but with that barrel distortion on, uh, we'll make sure that there isn't any black edges. We'll get a lot more extra uh, light and vision coming from the even the very far reaches of the image and we'll expand it even farther. So we'll be using, you know, the whole screen and making sure we're not, you know, having some cropped off edges. So uh, that's one of the fortunate things about rendering inside of uh, a 3D application is you actually get to you know, keep those extra pixels instead of just having an image and then distorting it and having it fit. You know, we're actually distorting it and pulling in more uh, field of view. All right, so uh, that brings us down to the last uh, real point here, and that's going to be uh, when you're actually rendering out the stereoscopic um, renders. Now, if you're rendering for something like the Vive or the uh, or the Rift, their resolution, the resolution on each of those is uh, 2160 by 1200, which mean that, means that each eye gets... 1080 by 1200. So it's you know it's a relatively thin slice. So we're looking at a at an aspect ratio that looks like this. So here let's go ahead and let's go to 1080 by 1200. So this is what we're actually getting. You know we're getting this um, you know kind of portrait style look, and because of that uh, they also have and because of the lenses they also have a wild, wider field of view. So if I take the camera here, I'm going to set the camera to uh, both the Rift and the Vive have a, a uh, an angle of view of 110 degrees. 
Um, so you can see that everything becomes way more zoomed out. So that's something that you'll want to take into account uh, also when you're rendering. Um, so we have our barrel distortion and we have our 110 uh, degree field of view. And now we can see a lot more in the scene, you know, which is great because we can see more in the scene. Um, and remember this lens is just here for temporary. Uh, we don't really need that on. So let's actually hop back over uh, to our setup scene here. And now I'm going to select my camera. And in this case, um, oops, wrong camera, <laughs> wrong scene. I'm going to set my uh, angle of view up to uh, 110 degrees, which would look super, super wide. But remember, we're also going to slice this vertically now so that uh, we don't have so much width. So it's not really going to uh, be as big as you would perceive it here. Uh, and then I'm going to turn my barrel distortion on. So again, things get kind of weird. But then when I go and take and adjust my frame width and height to 1080 by 1200 then it you can see that we're really not getting that much more of the scene in here but as we zoom in you know we do start to get the feeling that there is a lot of um, a lot of kind of wrapping going along around here so um, you know you do feel fairly immersed with this now uh, if you're entering for something else like um, uh, like the uh, uh, the Samsung uh, VR headset that Oculus also makes, you know, that's going to be based off of the phone resolution, uh, which I think is 2560 by 1440. Um, but again, you'll just be rendering each eye is getting half of that. So, you know, with this done, if we render this and then let's go back to our camera here and we'd want to set our camera up to instead of stereo composite, uh, we'd go to side by side full width and render. And now what we'll get is we'll actually get, um, oops, and sorry, I forgot to, no, no, this is correct, sorry. Uh, so I've got this here, and it's going to render one eye, and then it will render the other eye. And then what we'll see is we'll actually see each one side by side. It's going to squish them here, but if we save off the image and open it up in Photoshop, so here, let's do save image, and I'm just going to put this on my desktop for now. We'll call this uh, VR Preview save and then if we hop over to Photoshop and open that up we will see that we do get the full width here so it is each one is getting that full um, 1080 by 1200 and they're just put next to each other so this image here the way it's set up with the barrel distortion with the proper field of view with the proper resolution would be something that would natively give you a nice full view on uh, on a vive or a rift um, or scaled slightly differently on any other kind of headset so um and uh just as one last thing here i'm including in here with this because you know if you're going to render stuff in stereo in 3d um who doesn't want to do a 3d uh run of the death star trench i mean I can't think of, oh wait, everybody. Yeah, so uh, so I've got a real quick and simple uh, version of the trench here. Uh, and we got two versions of it, and you can play around with these as much as you want. Uh, just thought it would be a fun thing to include here. So I've got a version here just with some real simple displacement. It's just using the panel displacement. And uh, the stereoscopic is set up on it. Uh, so this is all ready to render. And then I've got an alternate version here where if I turn off let's see let's turn off my displacement here and i'm going to bring in my replicator which at the moment is hidden um you know what's better than 3d and uh and star wars uh 3d star wars legos right so uh if you want to uh if you want to get into more in-depth building uh cool stuff with legos here i'll let this kind of refine so you can see these are actually legos um if you want to get more in-depth building of stuff in legos make sure you check out my lego moto build guide uh it's a previous episode or uh before i even started doing these so i'll put the link down in the video description in case you missed that one uh but there you go so you can play around with this uh you can do your renderings you can set up your vr and then you can uh if you're if you've got a, an actual headset, you can render a quick animation and play it back and fly down a 3D 
stereoscopic VR Lego Death Star Trench. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and videos like it, please check out my Patreon account, um, patreon.com slash Ellery. If you would like the content to this episode or any of the other previous episodes of Moto with Ellery, check them out on Gumroad, gumroad.com slash Ellery. Again, um, that does it for this one. I hope you find it useful. Go make something cool, and I'll see you in the next one.